mission will not have any problem on our part. And all the things you've said is precisely why you meet Gambia, a peaceful country where you hardly recognize that there is conflict. Prior to the declaration of results, we had election campaign. And prior to the election campaign, we had many parties with diverse political programs. But because we do not have a second round of voting, we felt that if the opposition splits, then it is easy for the incumbent to have a right. We decided to come together in the spirit of national unity, in the supreme interest of the country, to have one person to stand. Because this is a country which has never changed through the ballot box. And we felt that we should make history together and facilitate that change. So throughout the campaign, what we told our electorate is that we are trying to unify a nation, unify the ethno-linguistic groups, unify the religions, Unify the gender, unify everybody so that this country can have a new start. That is the ethos of the coalition. In the campaign, we told our supporters that selecting a leader who will be entrusted with the responsibility of managing our resources our military apparatus, security apparatus, to ensure that we have progress and freedom. Does not require insults, does not require uh, conflict. What it requires is sober minds capable of making informed choices. So all the pre predictions that the uh, campaign will lead to violence, of course, as you know, there was no violence during our campaign. You will see the current president-elect and the incumbent having their convoys going side by side. That's what happens during the elections. So we went up to the declaration of results. And the incumbent called the person who was declared the winner and said in all uncertain terms that what happened is the verdict of the people and the verdict of God. And then said his doors are open and let him create the agenda and there will be cooperation to facilitate a smooth transfer of power. As you said, everybody jubilated. The unexpected has happened. Gambia has made history, both the incumbent and the president-elect. And that's how we conceived it. We decided, after that, to have a liaison. And the incumbent created a liaison. He accepted that he was going to be an outgoing president, and the president-elect will be the incoming president. And the liaison started working. They had an agenda to see what to tidy up such as the release of prisoners, those who are in detention with that, to tidy up so that it will be a goodwill gesture as we move towards the inauguration. We also agreed that we'll form two teams, transition teams. The president-elect formed his team, wrote a letter to introduce the team to the incumbent. But on the day that the letter was to be handed, they said, ah, an announcement is going to come. So wait for the announcement. And what was the announcement? I reject the elections. I've annulled it. We are going to have fresh elections under a new independent electoral commission. Those were the words. We, from the very beginning, told our electorate and everybody that 
the rule of law, good governance, human right, respect for human rights, democracy, this were unnegotiable. We will consolidate it in this country. We believe that the Independent Electoral Commission is the only authority empowered by the Constitution to declare results and to declare a winner. And that has happened. That's the language of the Constitution. If anybody wants to reject results, fine, you can form an opinion. But if you want to challenge it, you go to the courts. And you have 10 days to do that, to the Supreme Court. That was not the way he took. The road he took was to reject, annul, and declare that there will be fresh elections under another independent electoral commission. That you should note. That is the route he took, and that is the source of the crisis. When that declaration was made, and a threat that he will not tolerate any demonstrations, the coalition met, reviewed the words, reviewed the letter, reviewed the spirit, and we saw that the spirit was no longer calling for peaceful transfer of power. It is calling for confrontation. And the coalition said that it is not interested in con uh, confrontation. It will not take part in confrontation. No demonstration will take place because the constitution will prevail. The language of the constitution says, that the Independent Electoral Commission will declare the winner. But since election takes place three, within three months before the end of the term of office of the incumbent, we read the Constitution well, get our legal, got our legal advice properly, and knew that the president, incumbent is still effectively the President of the Republic of the Gambia until his five-year expires and that is in January 2017 so the president-elect made a declaration that he is declared elected by the competent body and according to the constitution which has no ambiguity he is to assume office on the day that the term of office of the incumbent expires. That is the order and command of the Constitution. So he issued a statement indicating, having been elected, all my supporters should focus on the day that the Constitution says I should assume office. And don't quarrel. If you see the soldiers in the street, know that the incumbent is still the president of the Republic of the Gambia. The institutions are under his control. He can order soldiers to go and be deployed anywhere. See them go about your business. That was the language of the president-elect issued. And we'll give you all the addresses, the copies of the addresses that he has made so far before you leave. That was the language. And when he gave that address, and it was a very trying moment for the nation, for the coalition, he added that both he and the incumbent were born in 1965 when Gambia became independent. They are duty bound to ensure a smooth transfer of power. And that he, in his own language, intends to invite him as the second president of the republic, along with the first president, to his inauguration. So, one cannot talk about inflammatory remarks here. It has never been part of the language of the president-elect. Not during the campaign period, not after the declaration of results, not after even the issue of unconstitutional statements. So in short, the address was tempered with majority, reason, and constitutional authority. That was the position of the coalition. The next day, there was a reaction on TV, not from the incumbent, but from a source from his party, 
that they were going to court. Eventually, we heard that they have filed hard. That's hearsay to us because president-elect is not part of those who are served. So we don't know anything about their court case because we are not party to it, we are not served. It seems like the whole case is about the anomalies caused by the Independent Electoral Commission, which fits more into corrupt electoral practices and you take people to court for abuse of their authority. We don't know how that links to election petition. We don't know. We don't know anything about it. We should not be quoted in any manner about their petition. We don't know anything about it. Zero knowledge apart from hearsay. So consequently, the ECOWAS came. And this is simply what they were told. That the constitution of the Gambia empowers the Independent Electoral Commission to conduct elections and declare results, and that has happened. We went through a process of trying to trans uh, have transition where we set up teams, and the teams would have met, look at the ministries, know their strategic plans, know their programs, know their projects, their action plans, draw their budget lines, the public corporation, the same thing, and then facilitate dossier being created to be handed over to the shadow cabinet to prepare to govern when he's inaugurated. That is the language of the coalition. And that was said to the ECOWAS, heads of state who came, that it is at that moment when we should move forward is when this declaration was made, which was unconstitutional. And we reacted to the unconstitutional declaration. And in terms of their court processes, we know nothing about it. And emphasize to him that the way we calm the supporters of the president-elect is to focus their mind on constitutionality, to tell them that the incumbent is the president, outgoing president, up to the end of his term, and on that day he is going to assume office. And therefore, let everybody prepare for that inauguration. And as legal minds, Starting a judicial process does not negate constitutional rights. So he still considers as his constitutional right, as president-elect, to be ready for inauguration and prepare for that inauguration. That is the message to the ECOWAS. They gave advice that ah, what has been done, they've heard that our supporters here and there had conflict, we said, Yes, there could be skirmishes, and we heard about skirmishes, but we now establish a National Reconciliation Committee of the Coalition. Anywhere we hear conflict, we send them there, and we have solved. If you talk to the Inspector General of Police today, and you should do that before leaving, he will tell you that our National Reconciliation Committee had met him several times and had told him, if he hears any conflict anywhere before he acts, let him inform us and our team will go there. And it's a mobile team. Any time of the night, they will go and they have been doing it. And we have solved all the problems that came to our notice amicably, without court action, without prosecution. We've been told of languages used. We said, well, maybe as the, at the spa of the moment, everybody can say anything. But all those people who were accused of making those statements, we went back to them. They would say, we've been misquoted here and there. So we felt that we've put our house in order. That statements are issued by the proper authorities. And those who have been uttering those statements had not been quoted of saying anything that threatens public peace, that threatens others. And here, I will come to conclude. We believe it's an invention to talk about prosecuting the incumbent. The language of cyberspace, of the online media, etc., uh, who has control over them? They insult anybody, they say anybody because they are in different factions. Some will be your supporters, some will be your opponents, so they are likely to say anything. That's the way of the world today. 
But people must be fair in their comments. And this, uh, the incumbent, I hope, is fair in the sense that he will not say anything that the president-elect has said, had him say, or the spokesperson, or any authorized person that threatens him. The first language in their communication was public. I congratulate you, my doors are open. I will, you've had experience 22 years. I may have cause to come to knock at your doors to consult you. That was the language from the president-elect, recorded in public space. And I hope any time you meet the incumbent, you will remind him of what we had said, what the president-elect had said. At the most critical moment when he said he has nullified things and he had no power to do so, the reaction could have been to attack. We are going to do something, something will happen. But there too will give you the address. We are all born in 1965. We should be committed to the supreme interest of our nation so that we can make history together. This has never happened. You will see it in the address. And that what I would want is to invite you as the second president of the Gambia with the first president to my inauguration as the third president of the Gambia. You will see it in the address. And through radio interviews, etc. Push, push to the hilt to say something about injustices that may have prevailed. He said, yes, justice is absolutely essential and injustice should be redressed but we are going to take the root of truth and reconciliation this is the language of the president-elect and a state that is responsible must listen to a language from a responsible authority to be able to indict if there is need to indict and we hope that you will know those facts and put it across. So lastly, we have been telling people as a whole that you cannot criticize something and then sink to it. The coalition want to bring redress. So therefore, we want the rule of law. The incumbent is still the president of the republic. He has not been indicted. Nobody has said anything about him. So what brings about uh, uh, exercising prerogative of mercy or amnesties, etc.? That's not the language of the coalition. The language of the coalition is we will respect constitutional authority, which states that you have a judiciary, you have an executive, you have a legislature. It is not the province of the president-elect to talk about anything in that regard that is a matter for the judiciary. And it is not a matter for the president-elect to get into the provincial of presumption of guilt of anybody to talk about providing uh, some, some amnesty. We believe in the presumption of innocence. That is, even after you are indicted, but nobody has been indicted. We have not even taken power yet. So that's not at all the language of this coalition. And we have all the documents to show that in our discussion, in everything we have done, we are preparing to be committed to democracy, the rule of law, respect for human rights, justice, good governance. Because we believe that that is what will enable to endear Gambia to the whole world so that investors will come, so that we'll be able to make progress. And that is why my conclusion is, as far as we are concerned, we are fully constitutional, we are constitution compliant. And at this material moment, there is no constitutional issue that bars him from preparing for inauguration. And from the language of ECOWAS, we have not seen any of them saying that they are going to flush the incumbent out. Our language 
is their language that the incumbent is the president elect that is indisputable and that when the term of the incumbent expires, he should assume office. That is their premise. And that is our premise. And we are working on that. And they are saying they will come when that happens. If anything happens in between, that's a new element. We will not speculate about that. We don't know about that because it does not exist. What we know is what we hold on to. And that's what we tell our supporters. Thank you very much. That's our position.